Moving to order the safety committee meeting on um, Tuesday, April 16th, 9 a.m. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Sorry, Dan. Dan Blanchett. Ron Bennock. Kieran Farrell. Don Thomas. Jim Bagoulis. And Jim Nickel. And Dan Allers. All right. Uh, is there any public comment? What? Yep. 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 Yeah, we're not as formal like we don't read your oh. name out. You, <laughs> and you just go to the little, yeah. Hi, Christy Hennessy. Um, I live on San Carlos Drive, which is on the other side of the Matanzas Pass Bridge, and I have an, a pedal assist track e-bike, and that gets me over the bridge, so I don't have to walk it every time, and then I can also keep up in traffic. Um, that's a biggie. And so my e-bike, my pedal assist, um, I can really stay with traffic. Like, I, I can be in line with the cars, and I don't hold anybody up. Many, most of the pedal assists, you know, they just don't have quite that much power, and they hold up traffic. Um, I, I don't ride on the sidewalk just because I'm not supposed to. I'm a boring rule follower. But um, I, yesterday even I was thinking, gosh, at least 50% of the bikes I saw on the sidewalk were pedal assist. And I'd look to see, you know, were they pedaling? So, you know, they might have been the push or whatever they're called but anyway you know they are going the same by same speed as the bikes that um that don't have any power and i have been behind bikes in traffic that i register zero miles per hour on my car because they're going so slowly and then the cars are piling up behind me so it doesn't matter to me if these Bikes going safe speeds that are pedal assist or whatever are on the sidewalks, but I just think of all the older people that would have given up their pedal assist and e-bikes because it's not safe for them to ride them in the street. They don't have the balance. Um, I have the balance and I wear a helmet, but still I'm, you know, I'm really cautious too. So just kind of putting in a word for if you're thinking about maybe allowing them on the sidewalks. Um, Something that takes up a lot more space is the um, trikes that we see our seniors riding. And we love to see them because they're out, out on a bike and it gets them around on the sidewalk. And that takes up a lot of space, whereas the e-bikes and pedal assist, they don't take up much space. And I can't say they're zooming. So I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? <coughs> Good morning. Carol Jacoby, I live on Linnell Road. Um, we're not e-bikes, we're regular bikes, um, but we do at times use the sidewalk because even if we're on the lane where it says the bike can go, I can't pedal fast enough to keep up with traffic. So then they try to pass you and down, you know, by the town square, that passing lane, or it's not a passing lane, there's no passing, is maybe three to four feet wide so they're almost going into the other lane of traffic to get around me they're supposed to stay behind me so then we end up riding the sidewalk where we can but if there's a pedestrian we get off and we walk our bikes around them get back on and we do that because that's you know we don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable or have to get aside for us we're the ones that shouldn't be on the sidewalk but that's where it's safe and we have our grandkids, we take them biking, even where we're at, like today, driving down here, I witnessed a truck with a trailer, the trailer was as wide as the road, so he's in the bike lane, he maybe doesn't even notice that his trailer's in the bike lane, and if he'd come up against someone, they'd have to jump onto the sidewalk to stay safe, and that was where it was painted green. So. Another thing I think you could do is either highlight those more often, because I see a lot of people wandering into the bike lanes. Um, you know, stripe them green. Maybe they don't have to all be fully green the whole way. 
also down by us up until the Catholic Church, there's a lot of sidewalk that has weeds growing in it, which is supposed to be grass, but it's not ever going to be grass. I would suggest taking that out, filling it in with concrete so that sidewalk is just a little bit wider there. And even if you, you know, like where I'm from in Minneapolis, there's wide paths where there's both bikes and walkers are allowed, and there's sign that says, you know, um, the pedestrians have the right of way. And so you have to be careful of them. But I think there's ways to use the sidewalks for regular or e-bikes. I don't see e-bikes on a sidewalk going that fast. Um, I think there's a lot of other things we could do to make what we have safe. And yes, if you want to alleviate traffic, bikes are the way to go. We bike um, to Town Square, to the concerts. We bring our chairs with. So we are on our bikes all the time. And if it's not safe to ride, we're walking them at for some point. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. We never have public comments. Yes. This is yeah, exciting this is for us. <laughs> Nobody comes to our meetings. Talk more. Talk more. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God. Go ahead. Sorry. My name's Les Gorsuch. Um, my wife and I have uh, started up Fox e bikes on San Carlos Island. So we ride pretty occasionally. In my mind, um, it, the least that we could do is maybe regulate the speed of the bikes on the sidewalks. Bikes will be riding on the sidewalks. It doesn't matter what laws you pass, what regulations you set. It's just to not have the bike lane forces the bike onto the sidewalk in safety. Um, everybody knows. You, you get behind a bike, it, you get impatient, you want to go around them. You know, it, could, it just sets up a situation to where there could there and there is um accidents happen so maybe at least keep an eye on um or announce it talk about it maybe have beach talk radio talk about it you could talk about it on there um to um we understand you're going to ride on the sidewalk please limit your speed um get but there's still crazy people that don't but in, in my mind that could help um alleviate that part of a, of a problem and like like the lady just said um bikes are are could really help the situation for traffic but it is what it is thank you thank you, thank you. anyone else Come. this is a record i know yes. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna buy a lot i'm sandy ticket. gorsuch les's husband like he said we open foxy bikes um I really intended to come here just to listen, but yesterday I rented to a couple and they took our bikes down to Lover's Key and they just had a blast. She saw manatees. She was so enthralled with the environment and being able to travel that way. And when they came back and I mentioned this meeting today, they told me about a YouTube channel called Just Not Just Bikes. And I would really encourage you all to look at it. This guy takes examples from all kinds of different municipalities, both here in America, Canada, Europe, and how they've been able to commingle cars, pedestrians, and bikes. And there is a phrase that's starting, or it has been coming out about, you know, a city is not bike friendly or it is bike friendly. And I would really like to see Fort Myers Beach become <coughs> more bike friendly. I think the more people that rode bikes, it would help relieve the congestion can't think of anything else. I'm sure I will later, but <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Check that out. Yeah. Was it not just bikes or not, not just, just e-bikes? Not just bikes, not just bikes. Not just on bikes. YouTube. I wrote it. Um, Mary Ann Sheely, I'm a full-time resident down on Island Pine Way. I'm also on the town audit committee and a member of the women's club. Um, I had chemotherapy last year, so I have um, permanent neuropathy. So my e-bike pedal assist is one of those tricycles that you see. <laughs> I got the big white tricycle. So it is really not safe for me to be in the street. I mean, cars are flying. And then once you get past, you know, where there's no bike lane, you have to be on the sidewalk. Um, so my tricycle does not go faster than 12 miles an hour. I mean, I just, I, I'm not one of those speeders. And I've always been very courteous to the pedestrians and everything. So I'm asking, please let, you know, nice people <laughs> not gonna say nice people that follow the rules <laughs> have e-bikes on the beach or the sidewalks because we do want to go downtown and go to the bars and spend money and you know we live and down on the south end we've got nothing so 
there's no pedestrians down there anyway, but there's also no restaurant. So, um, like I said, it, it's it's a few bad apples. I guess spoiled it for everybody is kind of you know. But there, as the island's coming back and more people are getting bikes and going out, um, and there is no bike lane, and I'm sure you've seen the roads are not safe. People are on their phones. If you, if, I don't know if the cops look, but people are drinking, people are smoking, they've got dogs in their laps. Like, you know, it's really not safe to be in the bike lane. It's it's really not. So please let us ride on the bike or on the beach or on the sidewalk if we're respectful with the speed limit or something like that. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jerry Foley, a retired Marine Colonel. Um, I wanted to first state the obvious is that you're not going to be able to legislate morality or legislate just plain simple common sense there's not a lot of common sense out there i ride my bike probably four or five times a week and down here and and uh in the in the the bike lane if you get off the sidewalk and you're in the bike in fact saturday i had a confrontation with a, a gentleman and his son and i didn't even realize that he knew my mother um, for the comments that he made, <laughs> because I was in, the, I was in there, and I, I'm on a pedal assist, and I was trying to keep, I was keeping up with traffic, but I guess he doesn't realize that that the law says I have as much right to that lane of traffic as he does, and he, and he took a, uh, took offense to it. Um, mostly, I would like for you to note that some of the places that have dealt with this, for instance, Virginia Beach, Virginia, they put a, up a boardwalk. Uh, they've had it for years, but it's a boardwalk, and they have so much bike traffic that they actually built a tarmac area beside it that's strictly for bikes and, and uh, rental and uh, surreys, that type of thing. Uh, recently, we were down in Key West, and they are trying to get cars off of Duval Street, and you, you're, you feel perfectly safe riding your bike right down the middle of Duval Street. Nobody's speeding or... Um, the, the whole thing of keeping up with trunks down there is a whole different issue. But, uh, and, and they've done a really good job of, of that. And I think the more that uh, Fort Myers Beach caters to the bikes, or it, I think with the high rises that are bu being built, the gentrification of, of Fort Myers Beach, it's going to lend to more traffic and it's going to lend to many more people. Uh, one suggestion that was on, I believe it was uh, Beach Talk Radio site, was is to take the the beach side sidewalk and make that pedestrian only no bikes no trikes nothing just pedestrians on the beach side and on the other side on the non-beach side take that sidewalk and make it strictly bikes you can pave a uh, strip right down the center of the sidewalk and for one going east one going west and that way it would be easier for the police to maintain. And I think that uh, the common sense on the police side of, of uh, stopping the people that are being egregious, the ones that are weaving in and out of traffic, the ones that are swinging around pedestrians, those are easier to spot. I know when we come over the bridge, we turn our, our power bikes off and we just do a regular pedal and you can still keep up with everything going on. So um, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right. Um, approval of the minutes. I appreciate everybody coming. Thank you. Um, great ideas and great comment. Um, approval of the minutes from March 19th. Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion's approved. Minutes are approved. Staff reports. Um, who wants to start? Chair? Chief? Not the sheriff. Not sheriff. Chief. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Captain. Good morning, Captain. Tim Layler, Lee County Sheriff's Office. Um, just wanted to touch base on just a few things that we've had. We just wrapped up our spring break operation. Happy to say, as, as we've been very lucky in the past, we've had no critical incidents, no major, no major issues. Uh, we had our deputies down here, and, and it got busy down here this year, busier than probably I thought it was going to be, but we were prepared, and, uh, and things went well. Uh, we're back to normal operations. We've got our guys down here enforcing the traffic laws and educating people and uh things seem to be good we have no crime trends right now to report so <clears throat> that's it for us 
You want to add anything? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chief Worth. Good morning, committee members. Um, Scott Worth, our Chief Fire Department. Um, I apologize for not having the printed reports this month, but um, I will say that trend-wise, we're seeing nothing outlying as far as trends go. Um, I know we talk a lot about, you know, bike and pedestrian. We, I do know that we had a, you know, two or three uh, vehicle versus pedestrian or vehicle versus bicycles uh, last month. Um, none of those, fortunately, were critical. Um, and I do know that we've had a couple of cut feet out on the beach. Um, so I don't know if possibly safety messages about wearing water shoes and stuff like that might be good um, information to go out. But um, other than that, no real outliers in the uh, in the call volume or the trends. When on those pedestrian and the bikes, was that uh, any certain area? Is it mostly the north end? Is it the south end, or is it all over? It's it's all over. Okay. But I would say, I, actually, I think we're seeing it more towards the uh, the south end. Actually, okay. yeah, in the middle middle part of the island. Okay. Is there any commonality in these incidents? Speeding, misdirection, crossing against the walk. Not nothing that would show up in our reporting. Okay. We don't we don't do the investigations um, as much as we go and treat the patients, treat their injuries. Okay. So, and then, last thing I'll say is looking forward to uh, next month at the emergency operations center. Awesome. Yeah. Madam Chair, may I ask a question real yeah. quick. Yes. On average, Chief, what would you say the response calls are for pedestrian bike incidents? In, in what fashion? Just a bike ran into a, a pedestrian. Yeah, it could be a car making a turn, a bike hits it, or no, not, I'm not, 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 not bike versus pedestrian, but a vehicle versus pedestrian, vehicle versus bicycle. So you don't really have a, a lot of calls for a bicycle hitting a pedestrian? Not necessarily. Okay. No. It's usually mostly cars and bikes? I think so. Okay. Or cars and pedestrians. Any other questions? I don't have anything. Nope. No. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Good morning. Thomas Yazo, Fort Myers Beach, Operations and Appliance. Uh, we've had a pretty good month. Uh, now that, you know, our populations kind of went back down again. So we're seeing our traffic decreasing. The Sheriff's Department has done an amazing job. I know they take a lot of heat for the traffic, but they've done an amazing job getting down and getting stuff squared away. Uh, the stuff on the, the bikes on the sidewalks, they've also been enforcing that pretty strongly, which I thank them for. No, we have not had a lot of accidents with bikes and pedestrians, thank goodness, because they, especially with the e-bikes, if they're cooking, they can hurt somebody pretty, well, pretty badly. Most of those interactions have come from e-bike drivers, heading down the way, and then it turns into an altercation because they almost clip somebody. And that's usually when they get to know his mother, apparently my mother too, when they talk to me. So um, <laughs> what we're seeing as we're going forward, though, is as we're educating people, because the SO is not just writing tickets, they're educating, just like the Rangers are. We're out there talking to people every day. So I think that has helped a lot, and I think bikes are a great idea. I hadn't heard the idea of the... Uh, east and west side of the sidewalk yet so i think that's something to explore but that has more to do with the county than it does so much with the town other than us digging into the ordinances i think i thought we own the sidewalks yeah who don't? i got it now who does own the sidewalks the i'm county. Sterile. county county so that's county not, right away okay so essentially not, from power pole to power pole is, okay. the best, is the easiest way so if it's under county jurisdiction and riding on the sidewalks is a town regulation or law why why is still our county... still within the town of fort myers jurisdiction right. the ordinances encompass that so that's why we we do go out and have conversations with people and lee county sheriff's office enforces all of it yes. so so it's not about the sidewalks proper it's just the fact that it's within the town correct okay and i would i would have to ask legal but i would assume that looking at something like that would be something that the town could probably do through an ordinance no different than what is currently in place now, I would think. You mean to rescind it or to Well, to, to, to modify it. To modify, okay. to modify okay. it to say one side or the other. I would think that, that would be something that the town would be in the town's. Also within the town's purview. Exactly. Okay. Okay. That's it for me. If you have any questions, I can answer them. Uh, we are still enforcing on the beach with the e-bikes. Uh, we, do, we do handle a lot of medical calls. It doesn't go to the, to the FD with just basic first aid for people. 
Uh, the cut foot is still our biggest issue there. We do have some people who have gotten out into the water and gotten tangled up with uh, fishing line and stuff too. We are rendering aid to that as well, but it's been nothing dramatic so far. I'll bring up some of this other stuff. So, yeah, I'll bring this other stuff up and you can jump back up. When okay, we get to very it. good. Awesome. Thank you. Dan, since you have to leave early, would you like to give an update on? Uh, yeah, um, I, I have to jump out at 945 for another meeting, but um, just a couple things at the meeting yesterday, we talked about specifically this bike ordinance and revisiting that because yeah. I've always found it. And what you heard here today, a lot of is I, I, I like to look at the E&E, &E, you know, education and then enforcement, whether it's bikes, whether it's turtles, whether it's whatever. I've always found it very difficult to make policy on what the vice mayor very eloquently says, bad actors, you know. Bad actors are going to do bad things no matter what the law tells them they can or can't do. So to try to police that or to try to policy make for those bad people is, for me, very difficult. I believe if you educate, educate, and educate, and educate, eventually you will get to the point where maybe those bad actor numbers dwindle a little bit, and then that's where the enforcement comes in. And I think being able to educate and then having the enforcement part of it as the backup, as the... If you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, we're going to tell you once. If we catch you again, we're going to you're you're going to get a ticket, right? And and I've always found that that's the best thing. So we're going to look at that. Um, I thought the idea of the sidewalk, if that's something that could work, I I don't know. I've I've personally noticed more people walking on the beach side of the sidewalk than or on the the bay side of the sidewalk <clears throat> than on the beach side. It seems like there's more people walking for some reason or another. I don't know if it's because they're all going north or what, but. Um, so I, I think that's a good idea that you guys could look at. Um, the council yesterday was was interested in this packet and, and your about. discussion on, you know, where we could go with this and how we could maybe lay something out. Um, uh, any suggestions with the bike ordinance? We we do we did uh, approve to put it on the next MMP meeting for discussion to look at allowing the bikes on the sidewalk as well as on the beach. Um, so if you have any discussions or any points that you want to bring up before then that you could get to us. I was going to say we need to get to your meeting. Um, yeah, it'll be on the next M&P meeting, okay. which will be next month. Okay. Um, it's the first Thursday of next month. I don't have, know what it is off the top of my head, but um, it sounds to me like there isn't a lot. I was going to ask if, if you could get us a report for pedestrian slash uh, bicycle accidents, but it doesn't sound like there's a ton in this report. There was stuff that showed through 2017, but there's really been no data since then. Um, I don't know how difficult it would be to get it, but even with pedestrians and cars, it might be something that the council would be interested in looking at. Uh, just just for reference, to compare it to the last seven years, if nothing else. Um, other than that, there's... I was going to say, Tom, you guys were supposed to have a meeting. So we have this packet. I'm just going to bring this up now. We're going to jump sure. around a little bit. So for those of you who are in the out there, there is a um, someone came in with a presentation a long time ago with a pedestrian and bicycle master plan. And there's a lot of good data in here. And now this is obviously pre-storm. Post-storm, I think we have a lot of opportunity <coughs> to grab some of this land or some of these places that we can create either a bike path or something that doesn't have to be right along the sidewalk. We can utilize some of these larger swaths like red coconut behind there and then behind the tops and behind the old town uh, town hall and then up behind, you know, um, sea grape. We really could go quite far and then get creative. But I didn't know, um, I want to say last month, Frankie said that somebody was coming in to do a presentation, but I don't know. We haven't heard that what happened or happened anything. That had not happened yet. We're still waiting to hear back from them. Okay. So they're still working on that process for this next step in that past this that's more modern, has new new data points and stuff. So we're still waiting to hear back from them okay. on that. Okay. Um, and is there any talk with this? Like they brought up a boardwalk. Have we ever talked? I mean, for the for the bikes? I mean, not a major one, but, you know, you go to Clearwater or any of those Well, there places. have been, I, I mean, back before the Margaritaville days, I know there was yeah. talk about doing a boardwalk of some sort, at least on the north end, and trying to expand that. Yeah, I think working with homeowners is going to be the difficult challenge to try to make it an island-wide thing like they have on the other coast. Um, doesn't mean it couldn't happen, but I think it's worth having a discussion. I've also talked with the town manager um, about, you know, we want to obviously promote biking and walking. In order to do that, you got to be able to facilitate them, right? Right now, we don't have anything up and down the island where people could park their bikes right. and get water in their water bottles. There's no water stations. You know, we all see at the base of the bridge on the other side, 
people locked their bikes up to the bridge because there's nothing there. And before the storm, there was talk about doing a bike station and a bubble station with water where you could fill your water bottles on both sides of the bridge so that people will bring their bikes and they have a place to securely lock them up. I know we're talking about doing one right out here where the, the workout thing is going to be. It looks like there's going to be a bubble station and a bike rack there. So maybe looking at that throughout the island, where, make, where does it make sense to have bike racks and water stations to be able to provide people that are walking or riding their bikes to, you know, park their bike. If they're just going to visit a friend or something, they could ride their bike and lock it up safely on the boulevard somewhere, and then they could just walk up the street or, you know, just something, I think, because as, as we build out to the point, I think one of the commenters made is as the island grows back, there's going to be different things along the island. And if you've been paying attention to the council meetings, there's been a lot of discussion about how do we spread out that commercial use on the boulevard which is com what the comp plan basically is called out for. So I think as we start to get into that, to be able to have places to take your bike and, and to, you know, get water and do things like that, it's something very easily that can be done very quickly, very, very inexpensive way to do things to, to get it out there. And, you know, you can have fun with it. Before the storm, you saw there was bike racks that looked like fish and turtles and all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, I like the idea that someone had about instead of putting planting in there in, in that, some places yeah. it's two feet some places it's much wider right um you know filling that in with concrete to to allow more space right. for pedestrians and bicyclists to to share the sidewalk it's something worth looking at i said that that's what i was thinking it doesn't go as far up as we need it to it stops when we start getting really busy but yeah so is there something the safety committee that we can be doing with action plan or do we need to wait until this company comes with their proposal um, you, you know i don't want to jump if they're already working on it, and or do we just come up with ideas and an action that we can oh, facilitate I, I, some ideas toward the, for them? I, I think any ideas are good. It, it, you know, the more ideas, the better. Maybe some will be running the same as what their suggestions are, okay. but it never hurts to have more ideas. I know, like I said, this is a something that the council is very interested in and in trying to figure out a path through the island mm -hmm. to get people off of the sterile boulevard because no, not everybody does feel comfortable riding right. on, you know, we've all seen the trailers going into the bike lanes and, and, you know, the talk about the green painting, the green, that was something that I was working on and the public safety committee was working on very heavily. To, again, it's county owned road. So they were looking at the data and the analysis and, you know, it, does it make sense to put those little rumble strip things I down the, like they, they have coming the over the bridge. Mm -hmm. I'm always pulling a trailer and, Sometimes you're looking, not paying attention, and then you feel the do 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 do. Oh, oh I got to pay attention, <laughs> you know, because you're looking at the water, you're doing whatever. In Miami Beach, they have they're a it's a big hub, it's a big circular hub that I mean you cannot go over it. You can't if your car hits it, it, it bump your wheel, and that's how they block off all the bike, and they allow electric bike, um, the scooters, all those things that everybody's in there in that little space, and you, no car can even get in there. Yeah, I, I mean just across the country, I think that there's there's such a movement whether it's electric vehicles, golf carts, bikes, whatever it is, there's there's a a very big push to, to get out of the cars and, and, and to find other modes of transportation. So my guess is there's a lot of good ideas out there in different municipalities and different beach towns that we could look at, do some research yeah. and, and see what makes sense here, knowing that we have a very unique, um, you know, very unique and that we don't own all the property. But the county, I, I'll tell you, is they're open to anything we suggest to them. Um, they, they don't shut the door on anything. They bring it to their commission when they need to bring it to their commission, and, and they're very favorable to help us do whatever we need to do. So I think now is the time. If, if you have ideas, even if they're crazy, if you think crazy, bring them up because uh, you don't talk about them, no one will ever know. And usually I've always found that the more people are talking, the more things come out of it. You know, it may not be the, you may not say something that's 100%, but you may sound something that inside that sparks something that he might say or she might say or you know, and then you eventually get to something that makes sense for everybody. So any ideas you have, bring them up. We'll, we'll listen. Okay. And we've got a you know, beautiful seven-mile beach out there that, it, to me, to not allow bicycles on that because they may or may not have a motor, it, it seems like a big wasted opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Anybody want to add to that? I would say... Whatever effort we could make working with the county to enlarge the sidewalks because <clears throat> people are going to ride on the sidewalk to get off the road and it would be beneficial and, and it would help safety wise. I mean, that's where our function is safety here. Mm -hmm. That's going to make a big difference. Secondly, if we can develop 
a way for people to ride a bike from the south to the north to the north to the south. And sometimes they're on the boulevard and sometimes they're off the boulevard. I think lots of people would take it if they're going to a destination. If they're just tourists and they're just cruising, they're probably going to cruise up the boulevard to see what that's about. Mm -hmm. Then we have to make the boulevard safe. And then we also, I think, have to provide an alternative to that to the degree that we can put together a plan to make that happen. Because lots of people say, I want to go to Lover's Key, and they would be able to jump on that and get to Lover's Key quickly and mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just want to Google and watch, you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Google high, so. You know, I think a lot of the, the issues that we see, and we all are aware of this, that live here year-round, it's three months out of the year where you get people that come on vacation and they don't, it's not that they want to do anything wrong. They just maybe don't understand the rules of what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do. And, and that's where that education and eventually you, if you have to enforce it, you enforce it. But the other eight, nine months out of the year, it's, it's people that live here and, and understand, you know, are respectful to other people and not just walking across the road wherever they want to. So it's really focusing in, in my point, in my, in my mind, focusing on what can we do for those three months out of the year as a town to promote whether it's, you know, education in advance, if it's, you know, someone, I, I don't know, there's a lot of different things that you could do. I've even seen people that have made you sign, for instance, in our golf carts, you can't even rent one until you sign something that if, if you go on the sidewalk, your, your rental is over. <laughs> there's no question about it. You're just going to come out and it's going to be gone. And, it, and it's things like that. that you try to be proactive. You still have knuckleheads that are going to do things that they shouldn't do. Um, but those are the ones where that enforcement comes in. So, Instead of penalizing everyone, penalize the ones that are choosing to do things wrong versus penalizing everyone that just wants to support business or try mm -hmm. to get to see their friends. or It's pretty common sense stuff. And places that rent the e-bikes and rent regular bikes, again, if they had master agreements like this that you have mm -hmm. to sign or information they could provide to the tourist that comes on the island that's never been here before so that they know what they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And... You know, many don't sign them, and I, but I could tell you every single person that I bring a golf cart to, that's the first thing I tell them. You can't do this, you can't do this, and you can't do this. But everything else, you've driven a car before, you understand it. But if you do these three things, and I'm going to reiterate, if you do the, one of these three things, it's one, you're probably going to get a ticket, and two, you just wasted your money if you had it for a week or whatever. It, it just, And they, people get it, and then they're like, well, it makes sense. I wouldn't drive my car on the beach. Well, there you go. It's common sense. So. Right. It's just reminding them in repetition, 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 and and uh, then they got to remind their friends. <laughs> so, good. Well, I'd like to see everybody because you, for those of you who did not get this email a few months ago, I think you should review it. Um, I think with the new town hall going on the south end, we're going to need some solutions for town employees to be able to go up and down the roads. I still think there should be it wide enough for a golf cart lane and the bike lane all together, like it, anything motorized, like off. Uh, that's a right. I mean, that's the thing with the right of way. That's why we don't have a bike lane on the north end. Yeah, it's just the right of way isn't there. Exactly. I mean, and, and unless you're gonna take everyone's property, which well, I just we think know could be very there messy. Are some, I think there are some solutions that we could at least cut off a few miles sure. for people. If you're a town, you know, if you're in a town buggy and you need to get up north and the traffic's backed up, you're kind of you're gonna sit there for hours. So I mean, they can take the beach because of the town, but still, it'd be nice to have if employees. You need to get home back to a, a car or whatever they park a little farther north they could get you know past all that stuff and anyway but um yeah i think you'll find this very useful i mean yeah. it's from 2017 if i remember correctly but it's yeah but there's there's a lot of good information that mm -hmm. at the time was a pipe dream on some of this stuff because the, yeah. you would, the land wouldn't be available but right now if you look at it there i think that's a good starting point to to be able to springboard into something that could potentially work I'd like us all to come up with some ideas and come and look at this and come plan and be able to propose something to town council that also <coughs> can go hand in hand with this company that's coming up with a plan. Because I do think we need to make this a bike friendly, you know, get more cars off the street. Because we're going to have a lot of workers on this island for the next five years. Well, and is it, is it something that, you know, as a town is going through and redoing the storm water and things like that and the easements that the town needs to be able to do that, is there a possibility to make that a dual purpose easement where? Right, exactly. You know, if we need it for storm water, could it be gravel or something where you could ride a bike on it? I don't know if there's a way to kind of align things up mm -hmm. through the design process to be able to do that. But exactly, love it. Well, I gotta, I gotta agree with the, uh, the, uh, the beach side of it. Um, 
you know, we already have, you have a whole beach, which is going to be, which is wider than the sidewalks already. And um, it, it just, to me, it just seems that, you know, stopping the e-bikes from riding on the beach was bad policy because of a few bad actors. Um, and then all of us have to pay the, the cost of not riding the beach. You know, there's, there's already a, well, not quite seven because it stops down by the old pinch, yeah. but um, that's, <laughs> the beach is, you got a great view too while you're riding your e-bike, your pedal assist, so. Well, once the renourishment is done, it's going to go back out again, so you'll be able, I mean. So then you can take it all the way south. You should be able to. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I How just, do we go about proposing that? We, to, you know, do a proposal that we want a boardwalk that, you know, I mean, we just come in and start out. I mean, I think that's the kind of thing we need to propose. Yeah, again, I mean, you're dealing with property owners there, and we saw how difficult it was to get the property, all the property owners to sign off on the easement for the for the berm. Right. So having a boardwalk through their backyard might be a difficult uphill battle, but I think if you can show how, I mean, you look back at what Margaritaville proposed at Times Square when they, their first proposal, that coastal construction wall, or whatever they called it back then, I right. remember, you know, everybody was like, oh, no way, no way. And that would have saved Times Square if you look back at it. You know, yeah. if you looked at that, would have saved all the buildings in Times Square and downtown, just breaking up the wave action. So being f forward thinking, and, and yes, it may not be the most, but at least it's something to talk about and it's something to look at. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be egregious, but I, I think it would be a, a, something to talk about for sure. I think so. Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> he probably needs to come up here. Oh, yeah, come yeah. on. Why not? <laughs> we never have people here. I appreciate it. Les <laughs> Having a trail along the beach solves all these problems. It does. It's one thing that we have to come up with to solve all those problems with bikes and traffic. Well, you're assuming nobody would... Right on the sidewalk still, but <laughs> they always have to address both. Yeah, yeah, I think it's but he's probably right. It would you could move sure. the whole length of the island pretty quickly if you had a way to do it. <laughs> um, two thoughts. One is um, when making it uh, bikes one side. I thought this earlier, and I was going to say it afterwards for the public comment. If you have bikes on one side, pedestrians on the other side, then it's going to be a lot of walkers crossing the street. Mm -hmm. That was my mm -hmm. first thought, um, and then. A brick. Oh, the boardwalk. Okay. Don knows me. <laughs> Dan knows me. Karen, the. Like, land you know the plane, me. Christy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, woman of tangents. Um, <laughs> so, a thought I had maybe is you know, how people don't, people with homes on the beach side, they don't like people encroaching onto their property. If there's a boardwalk going along that's a property line mm -hmm. area, then th people would understand that's someone's backyard. And maybe they would stop putting their chairs in people's backyards and that kind of thing. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I do that in Tampa. They have a, they have a, um, like a knee wall. So you can't block, go over it, but. All right, well, I think everybody should need to read over this and, and we need to come up with some ideas and then, um, this MMP, I'd like to go. I'll be at that meeting to talk and say some of the things that we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think you got a lot of good suggestions that were in public comment that mm -hmm. you could bring forward to. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to your hurricane response plan. Wow, that's great. Um, okay, so there was a. Uh, just for everyone knows, so there's a hurricane response as we get into the season um, coming up shortly. Uh, one of the ideas we've had is how do we uh, do a two-way conversation with um, anyone that's staying on the beach during a hurricane, and we wanted to be able to have that list to provide to first responders so they know what houses to check first um, and during and after a hurricane um, so that those people would get medical attention if needed. So one of the activities was to um, work with Nicole um, PIO to figure out how we use the code red system um, that is available to us today. Um, so I did meet with her um, last week, went through some of the, the opportunities. Um, we're still working through a pilot right now with the, the staff and uh, just to see how it reports out because it's great. You could go ask questions, get the data back, but if you can't sort it and go through it yet, 10,000 response, 
it's not going to really help us that much to go one line item by line item. So we're working through some of the nuances with the, the technology and um, seeing of how we can report that out. Uh, one other aspect of it was with the Code Red system um, is to educate everyone that's um, a guest and or a resident of the beach to sign up. So um, Nicole had mentioned that she is um, in May. This will be um, active and part of the you know, online um, communication that will be going out to all um, Fort Myers Beach and for them to you know, sign up for Code Red systems. Um, so that that's kind of lands a little bit where we are there. What, what we're trying to get to is um, having this pilot complete within May so that it could go active in June um, and sending that out to all, you know, anyone that is on the Code Red system um, to report back to say, are you still a resident of Fort Myers Beach? Ask a question just to, so that we have a current list of people that are living on the beach. And um, then as we wait for um, a hurricane that would potentially happen this year, um, then that communication would go back out to them to see if they would be leaving or staying on the beach during that time period. So work in motion. Um, we're just still um, working through some of the how you report out um, what that day is. I think you should go again to town council and maybe we both go the same day and give that update because I think it would get more people would hear it and hear what's going on and and it was a wonderful idea that you came up with. So. I think that you uh, need to present it again, tell them where you're at, okay. and then so that we can get it, more people to hear about it as well, because you're moving along quite well. Mm -hmm. awesome. Jim, will it, will, it, will it allow you to, like, is it a questionnaire? Kind of, I guess is what I'm doing. Yeah. So will, will it allow you, if you choose to, put in the information of, I'm going to be staying at 123 ABC Street? Yeah, and this is where we're trying to work through. Um, we wanted to have it so that they could respond. If you ask the question, are you staying on, on the beach during the hurricane? If they say no, then that's fine. They don't need to respond after. If it was a yes, we'd ask where location-wise and how many people are in your party. Very good. Which is what we want to get to. Um, problem is I think we're restricted on how we do that. So that's why we're still kind of working through some of the, the, the challenges behind the scenes. Just, seems like we could only ask one question so if mm -hmm. it, then the response would be like yes okay then please tell us um in the same line you know your location and how many people in your party that data would come back and then we'd have to sort it somehow so mm -hmm. you know it depends on how that data comes back through the system and that's what why we're still working through the pilot very nice um the other piece that i heard from um the last beam that we had with town council was really focus on how we engage all of the rental um, properties, you know, from an Airbnb or um, some of the rental organizations here, working closely with them. So, so if they're renting to um, people on the beach, that they need to be filling out, you know, if that's a yes or no, who, how many people are, are um, going to be staying in their units um, during that time period. So we're looking at for both you know, how we leverage it from both residents, but also, you know, the owners, landlords, and or uh, rental management companies. What about condos and hotels? Yeah, that's, uh, it is con um, condos function condos, like an individual yeah. household. Okay. Hotels, hotels that's a different, that's a different yeah, that'd be a different challenge. Well, I, I mean, I think most hotels, they, they know who's coming in, who's coming out every day. Yeah. I think it'd be an easy thing for them to be able mm -hmm. to provide information Yep. I don't know if the sheriff's department or the, the, the fire district does that now or not, collects information like that. But I think if you could have the more information you could yep. provide them, I think the better Absolutely. off it would make it. Yeah. So it's kind of where we're starting, starting with the residents. Then we'll move into, you know, the rental properties and hotels, I think, as we sure. start to prove out the technology. And we may be coming back to town council and saying we might need to do something a little bit different with the code red system allowing mm -hmm. us to have a, a, a stronger report so sure. that's where i'll work with uh, nicole to figure that out thank you um well we're back to public safety campaign and messaging um well i'll come back i'll do that later we talked about electric bike messaging i know that she is i had um asked for the flyer that they were marketing the message about no electric bikes on the sidewalk whatsoever. I know that it has been being promoted. I know that Beach Talk Radio pushed it out as well because this is why everybody's here. Um, 
I think we need to continue to push it out, but we also need to look at if we're going to start doing changes to things to really get it out to people, because people are coming up with some ideas, and and I, I, I'm challenging everybody also to watch not just bikes. We might yeah, learn yeah. some things as well. Definitely. So, look forward to um, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to hold off a little bit on the messaging that you're trying to put out until you know, I know. what the message is that you're exactly. trying to send out. Right. We don't if want to say all this, and then we change, change it. Everything. Everything. Things are in flux. Yeah. Right. Too just much. just yeah. kidding. Yeah. Um, crosswalk messaging. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any crosswalk messaging, if she has done any from the PIO about crossing in the crosswalk. We've talked about things like that. As We are starting to slow down now, so you know, spring break was a little nutty with everybody just walking when they wanted to cross. And we talked about putting up barriers in that downtown area so people aren't just crossing right when they go over the bridge. <clears throat> and I don't know if we've done anything more with that, Tom. Do you know anything? We were focusing on the safety of the bikes right now. Okay. We were focusing on a bunch of uh, other safety issues and with the turtle turtle season coming back. So I know some of that was okay. the focus. So we are, that is in the plan okay. to get the crosswalk messaging out there. Uh, I think during season we it's were, we were enforcing it you know a little bit more of like right. having conversations with people i should say educating more <clears> than enforcing of course but um i think that that's going to come around again as we come into our summer months because we okay. can pick up a little bit there again so we are going to put that out with nicole okay. okay i was wondering that if it's just more of a timing since it's getting quiet i did notice that um um a lot more of the crosswalk signs were put up up and down the island so a lot of those were put up one thing that I got um, just noticing riding um, up and down the island is that, um, especially down in, in my area where I live, um, Estero makes a couple bends. So like Linnell, we have the flashing light that tells you the crosswalk's coming up. Um, in areas like that where, where it is tougher to cross because there's a bend and the, visi you know, the, the, the line of visibility is a lot is more reduced, is there a way for those crosswalks to get some of those blinking lights to let cars know that you're coming upon a crosswalk? Well, I, I think I can help you with that one because I, I was I spent a lot of work and a lot of time with trying to get the Linnell crosswalk in, and it would have never happened without the help of the fire district and then Chief Martin at the time. They, they provided us a lot of data that we could go to the county with and say, here here's the incident reports that we can show you why it's needed here um, there's no appetite from the county I'll tell you to put them at every single crosswalk they feel that that is a you, you, you become numb to it then um, but they certainly are, are willing to listen if the data proves that there's areas like you're pointing out so if it's something that the, the fire district can help us with on specific locations that maybe the public safety committee determines that are more important than others to have it I know another one that's been brought up is across from Fairview Wiles right there there's a lot of yeah. a lot of crossing that goes on there, but I think having the data from from the fire department and the and Lee County Sheriff's <laughs> Office having them on our side goes a long way with the county willing being willing to put those up um, because they don't just want to not that they're extremely expensive, but they they don't want to get eye fatigue is is kind of what they've talked about. <clears throat> yeah, I, I can understand that. If I could get if I could get with you guys at all to just see what the uh, see what your reports would show for some of those areas that I'll, I'll go through and look at some of the areas where it's it's kind of a blind as you're coming down. Um, and I just know from personal experience mm -hmm. at night trying to cross and you know we don't have we don't have um, public parking so everybody from the neighborhood is all walking mm -hmm. trying to cross the street there and it's in at night it's 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 blind there. So um, if, if that's fine I'd, if that's okay. Yeah to get with you just to see if there's anything if there's more incidences at those certain areas there where it's kind well, of a blind intersection before I have to run off there's one other thing that just again that talking sparks something in your brain you know when you're you're going through those uh, things those clickers that you know it keeps track of how many people mm -hmm. I wonder if there's anything if we could look into a way fairly reasonably to, to keep track of how many people actually cross a crosswalk you know, this crosswalk gets a thousand people a week. This crosswalk gets twenty people a week. If there's something simple, technology-wise, out there that monitors people when they cross, you know, mm -hmm. if there's something out there that you could look into to do that, because then that's really good data to say this this has 
10 or 20 times more people crossing here than they do here. Maybe we really need to look at that because it then increases the potential of there being an accident at some point. Well, I was just, and I just saw that Lonnie Kai is going to start taking reservations in August. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling that area with all that parking mm -hmm. is going to be quite it's be a, bit a lot of, of stop and go crossing there. again. Yeah. All right. I got to run, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Real quick, how achievable? I've, I've mentioned this before, and I hate to keep bringing this up and beat a dead horse if it's dead. How achievable are putting those signs in the middle of the crosswalk in the middle lane that say, you know, pedestrians have the right of way? It's a little like a bobber yeah. kind of a thing, and I, emergency I remember. vehicles can run them over and then they pop back up or something like that. I'll reach out back out to the county on that. I know we talked about it before the storm, yeah. and there was a reasoning as to why they didn't want to do it, but I don't remember the specific reason, to be honest yeah. with you. But I, I'll reach out There's and ask them again. No electricity is required. There's, you know, yeah. they're not that expensive, I don't think. Certainly not like the light at Linnell, but yeah, I'll yeah. I'll I'll reach out to Commissioner Sandel again and have him reach out to his team to find out. There was a reason, and I don't remember exactly what the reason was, but yeah. we did talk about it before the storm, mm -hmm. doing something like that, even mm -hmm. just the you know the very narrow ones. Yeah. I believe they used to have one down by the the Wyndham. There was something in the middle there, if I remember that there they was. that they had there. So something similar to what that was, yeah. but yeah. again, I don't know that they'll put one at every single crosswalk. But be nice at the busy ones, though. Yeah, yeah I think having Absolutely. as much data as you can to be able to provide them, then it's harder for them to because say no. Well, I think law enforcement and fire, public safety, mm -hmm. tries to keep that lane available for their equipment too. Well, you can sure. go over it. They flip down. Go right yeah, down. They don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These guys don't want to run over it. Yeah. They don't have to. No. <laughs> That's one but thing that it's, it's, on it's kind of dual purpose. One is it lets car it lets drivers know that there's a crosswalk there. Yeah. Yeah. And two, it lets pedestrians know there's a crosswalk there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's 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 nice so, seeing the signs go back up. You yeah. know, the crosswalk signs are yeah, starting to go yeah, back that, up. So that, yes, that's that'll, right. that'll certainly help bring your attention to it and I'm sure at some point there'll be some restriping that's going to have to be done because of all the trucks over the last two years that have been going over it. So, yeah, it's really good. Um, well, I'm sorry I have to... Thank you. No, I'm glad you came. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, speaking of all this goes hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, FDOT is coming in on our May meeting. Yep. May 20... What is that? May... The May 21st meeting, and they're going to be giving us a presentation on the... Um, roundabout at the base of the bridge. Mm -hmm. They've pushed back the start date. I think it was supposed to be October, and now they pushed that back again. You know, let's just start it in the heart of season. Mm. And, um, but I think it'll be a good idea to see all, what they're planning. And it'll be interesting if the barriers will maybe come into play at that point, because it, once we get through the summer, get through everything, I think we're gonna start seeing more businesses are gonna start opening, more people are gonna start coming, more hotels are gonna start coming. And I think next summer or next uh, winter is going to be pretty darn busy. And if that bridge is under construction, it'll be um, kind of a mess. Mm. Ride more bikes. Ride more bikes. <laughs> so I know uh, Frank has gone to F that with some of that stuff about the barriers and stuff. And I know that was part of their discussion. Yeah. With that and getting that engaged, and we did talk about some of the barriers along the sidewalk as well. That's still a big discussion okay. that has to come into the county saying, okay, that not that in some respect, too. Sure. Um, I will take I, I will take the task on to figure out about uh, doing, I know in New York City they have mats that record steps okay. so they know where pedestrian traffic is. Oh. They do it with some cameras, but they are. There were some mats that I remember seeing some past, sometime in my past. So I will look and see what, if we can get them. We'll partner with the FD. And we'll see what we can put together in those areas so we can see what kind of foot traffic is moving in that space, uh, especially at the crosswalk spaces. Oh, great. Because okay, I do great. know it's limited parking down by you guys. There's no place for anybody to go. So all the residents do come across there. And with the lighting being subdued now and everything, too, it's, it's definitely a safety issue, I, I, I hope. So I will, I, will, I will look into that for the next meeting. I will see what kind of information I can come up with on that, okay? That'd be great. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Um, all right, um, member items and reports. Anybody have anything? Yeah, I can start. Go ahead. Um, so, <laughs> great to see public here. Um, for mostly previous meetings, we did not have anyone. So, um, what we decided to do during the last uh, meeting was to reach out to the public and ask for their uh, opinions on about public safety and 
And this really comes about when we start to think about um, public safety. We've gone to town council, started to review what their um, thoughts were. We've also um, you know, wanted to hear from the public and how do we keep our beach safe. So what's done offline is uh, created a survey. So in front of everyone here is um, a survey that was sent out previously. And it's just a draft, but what we intend to do is to you know, put this onto Fort Myers Beach um, website and ask for five questions. Um, and the questions are just, what can be improved to increase safety on Fort Myers Beach, was, which is an open text um, by the people showing up today. I know what that would be. Um, but, you know, you know, reaching out to many people to figure out, like, where do they see their opportunities. Um, second question is, do you feel that you are informed about what is happening to improve the safety on Fort Myers Beach? Um, you know, working with uh, Nicole PIO, wanted to uh, start to understand how many people are actually going to the site for information and using um, the Fort Myers Beach site. If you see a safety issue, do you know how to report a public safety finding? Again, are they using um, the technology today, or how could we actually enhance that or ed educate um, the, the public for that? Uh, number four, um, we had talked about in the previous meeting about a neighborhood watch program. So question here would be, would you be willing to participate in neighborhood watch program, a yes or no? Um, that just gauges, like everyone would say, yeah, sure, why not? But okay, what does that really mean? How do you participate? Um, and we want to understand what level does that fit on as far as a priority for us. And the, and the last is a kind of a force ranking. So we have like 10 areas that we wanted to focus in on, um, wanted to get input from the public on where do they think is most important to least important from beach and water safety to bike safety, pedestrian safety, theft, vandalism, crosswalks, motor vehicle enforcement, um, neighborhood watch, homeless, Lee County Sheriff availability response and street lighting. Um, so this is a draft wanted to open it up to um, you know, the committee here to add, build on it, <coughs> subtract stuff. Um, what we'd like to do is get this out, um, probably put it online at least uh, May or June uh, and um, start to pull the, the community and, and the public to get some more perspective on areas that we can potentially focus on in, in the future. The only thing I think about is on number four, would you be willing to participate in Neighborhood Watch? Why not? Why don't we just say um, Lee County Sheriff has a person that, well, it used to be a woman, I can't think of her name right now, that did the Neighborhood Watch. She'd come to your um, your neighborhood meeting, she would do a presentation, she'd give you the tips, tell you what's going on, tell you how to get a sign for the front of your neighborhood. Um, why couldn't we, instead of saying, like, making a question, say, if you want to sign up for Neighborhood Watch, please contact ba 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 and ask for so-and-so and, -so and do it as... turn it around and say, may we contact you. Or may we contact you or contact... Yeah, something like that. So it's more proactive so we can shoot it out to them and say, oh, you're interested? Okay, here's her name, this, and this is what you need to do. Because we did launch that about four years ago. Three years ago, we had a Neighborhood yeah. Hood Watch. We oh, promoted we it. Then too. Yeah, and we had neighborhoods. We don't have a lot now. We don't have a lot of neighborhoods yet. Yeah. They're right. coming. They're, they'll be, yeah. They'll be back. They'll be back. Well, and that's a perfect thing. As your neighborhood starts to fill back in, right. um, now's mm -hmm. the time to start your neighborhood watch, get everybody, have a, you know, a person yeah, that you. is your key person who gathers the emails and then set up a meeting so that Lee County Sheriff's representatives can come in with their presentation. Sure. The only other thing I see missing on there that are people are going to want to comment on is traffic flow in other words is that safety though yeah. traffic flow well I think it creates problems when people jump out in the center lane and take off and go around True. and do I, when you're asking people what's the big what are your biggest concerns it's traffic it's, it's, it's tra traffic, it's traffic. Yeah. so you gotta let them say it let them think right. it. if you don't okay. say it they're gonna type it in anyhow good point <laughs> Okay. We'll solve This that. is awesome. So, what? Did, Any builds? Anybody else? Nothing here. I had a question. What's the status or or where are we with community policing? Has that been a beat to a dead horse? Or we'll bring. Well, 
community policing. I know that we've talked about it, and then town council shot it down. We proposed it, and I don't know if it's come back up. We actually <coughs> said we wanted it. We voted yeah, yes, right, yes, and we presented it to town council. And, and it was they previous it town council that voted no. Right? True, and it was pre-storm. Yeah, right. Um, I think it's something that we could, I think we need to go back to town and say, is this something you're reviewing? If they're not, if it's not on their docket, there's no point of us bringing it up. I think it's something as we continue to gain more residents and people here that are coming back. I mean, we don't even have the condos in on the south end quite yet. So once no. people start coming back, maybe it's something that we bring back up. And businesses back. as well. And businesses. We don't have Santini, yeah. you know, Mid-Island. Um, a great deal can be done community policing-wise with businesses mm -hmm. to work closely with law enforcement. To, right. So I think that if it's not on their, if it's not on their, they're not thinking about it, they should be uh, for the future. Uh, we can propose that to Dan and ask him. Yeah. And we can shoot him an email through a contact and find out where they're at. Because it might be on their burner and I just don't know. That's when it's nice when he's here. Okay, so what's your next, what, um, on this one? So I was working with Nicole. I was working with Nicole as well, and um, once we're, we're good here, um, she'll, she'll go ahead, up. yep, she'll put it online, and uh, we'll start to get some input. Do you only want people who live here to answer this, residents or anybody? I think it's ever, anybody. Um, okay. Do you, we could, well, we could, we could have another question and say, are you a resident or a guest? Probably doesn't matter. No. Just doesn't matter. I just wondered how she was going to promote it. Okay. Great. Love it. Okay. Good job. Um, any other member items or reports? I guess I'd like to look at possibly in the next MMP meeting if, if either one of you is going to make a presentation that we include some verbiage regarding the e bikes on the sidewalk toward the town and lobby. At least I think generally, I think we all agree to rescind. Mm -hmm. E-bikes on the sidewalk, and in the same breath, set a speed limit. Okay. Because it's really pedal bikes, you know, for lack of a better term, pedal bikes, non-e-bikes, can go 20 miles an hour down the sidewalk as well. E-bikes can go 20 miles an hour. So there's really no difference except for the speed. That's the safety issue, I think. It's, we don't see people on e-bikes at 10 miles an hour running into pedestrians that I know of, unless if they have reports to the contrary, I'm amenable to that. But it really comes down to, like I said, common sense, which isn't all that common. And I certainly don't want my mother brought into a conversation if I'm brought, if I'm on the sidewalk. Um, I think it's really a time and it's more immediacy. I think if you're going to go to the MEP, mm -hmm. I'd like to see you lobby for the re rescinding of the e-bikes on the sidewalk and create a speed limit. I actually would like to see us throw out a couple of the ideas of splitting the sidewalk. If yeah. the I think that's a great idea. Pedestrians, the or the canal side, not the canal side, I'm sorry, the back bay side is for bikes. I was sitting here thinking, as you go from the library to Times Square, I mean, well, let's say to Margaritaville. Essentially. Right now, I can't think of one business that's open with the exception of, um, well, actually, there's, there's no businesses in there open. Um, I was thinking about where the post office is. That, right. mm -hmm. that mall has nothing open in there. There is no commerce on that side right now. There's parking, but everything else is getting built. You've got, you know, the goods is going to start being built. You've got... Um, the whale. The whale will be whale. under construction. 7-Eleven Seven. Seven. will be under construction. So it, it, all that is gone. <clears throat> if you think about it, maybe this is the time to test it and say, we do this, um, we're going to try it from all the way from the library. Well, actually, you go to Red Coconut, whatever. When it, it divides up all the way up, and it, you can make it all the way, I think, to uh, Crescent. You can. However, I think that people, if you make that side of the road bike only, it's going to be Katie bar the door. People are going to get on that side and, hey, I'm on bike side and I get to go 20 miles an hour down the sidewalk. Well, I do like your idea of putting it, uh, speed limit on it. 10 or 12 10 is, miles an hour. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Um, but. What if? 
and maybe I'm overthinking this. What if you split the sidewalk? I thought of that too. And you put a nice big white stripe right down the middle, and you put a bike logo on one side and a pedestrian logo on the other, and you do that every, yep. pick a number, 50 yards, 100 yards, whatever you want to do. I think you, you do, do it the whole way down. Yeah. Why not? So that people I know. I thought of that too, but today I was, you ride I was the bike, driving. You ride the bike toward the curb. Yeah. Keep the pedestrians um, away from the street. Well, I, I think we should come up. I mean, there's so many good ideas that people have come up with. This is the time to try it. <coughs> and, you know, besides, I want to look at this to create a path, because I already have half of it done. I just kind of got to a point where I can't find where the bike could go. But um, I think it could solve so many issues. Right. Because like Dan mentioned earlier, the problem you run into, and I don't know if it's a problem necessarily, but on the beach side, you run into people's privacy, you run into eminent domain, you run into the coastal construction line. There's all there's a number of factors in the beach itself that might make it prohibitive to have, you know, a boardwalk. As great an idea as it is, right. but you've got people who are going to be looking out their back patio or their pool at people zipping by on bikes, walking, and then you run into privacy as far as, hey, listen, I want to catch a tan, and I got, you know, a hundred people going past my backyard. Right. So I just, you know, it, it's starting in small increments. Sure. So, there. Well, I just want to say one other thing, too, is that last month um, I had the same issue that that gentleman back there had. A, a car stopped in front of me. There's myself, my cousin, and his wife were biking down in the bike in the street, and a car come around us, stopped, got out of his car, and then confronted us right in the middle of a sterile. And um, so along with what Karen said is that I think that uh, if we're going to do for push for to allow the e-bikes on a sidewalk, I think allowing the e-bikes on the beach is hand in hand. <clears throat> is hand in hand allowing the e-bikes on the beach. The the beach is just the beach is just wider and it's open right. and it's just I, I I just I never understood the, the e-bike not on the beach. Same ordinance. Same ordinance. Same ordinance. Okay. I'm yeah. sure the issue there was speed. I mean, the, the, yeah. they're envisioning these e-bikes going 20 miles an hour, and the poor person laying out on the beach gets oh, run over. Or I the agree. child Absolutely. playing on the beach steps out in front of the 20-mile-an-hour bicycle. Right. You, we have to, you know, you, you have to regulate it just the same way you would on the sidewalk. You have to put a speed limit Didn't out you? there. Well, I do <coughs> agree, though. Like, when, when we're in season and you're at the, or the beach is very crowded, you should not be riding your e-bike in the middle of those people, you know, from, when you think about the beach at Lonnie Kai, past Margaritaville, up to Times Square, it, you can't ride a bike through there. I mean, very fast, it, I mean, very slowly, but there's too many people even then, during the peak of the day, mm -hmm. then it is pretty dangerous. Yeah, and I can tell you, just from my own experience, once you get past Lonnie Kai, it, the beach is pretty much open. Exactly, and once you hit there, phew, you can go. Right. I agree with that. So, I mean, it's, it's, that's it's a lot of sense. space. Yeah. It is, it's, 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 it's common it's sense. It's not common sense. It's not all that common. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I will put together some of these. I'll write this up, and I'll go to the MMP and, and, and list some of the suggestions and say that we've got some ideas. Chief? I'll call, you know, have, Committee members, um, as Jim was talking about uh, uh, code red, reverse 911, I did reach out to the uh, chief of dispatch. Mm -hmm. So um, next month when we get to uh, the EOC, mm -hmm. uh, emergency management does have a program. It's called IPAWS, and that will blast by geolocation. So whether it's a visitor without, a, without code red on their phone, mm -hmm. you don't have to have an app. It's, it'll blast it out. It's a system that basically we turn on when we need it. We blast everybody geolocated in this area and possibly an app similar to what we put together for the uh, sidewalks. Mm -hmm. They just get on and they say, my name is so-and-so and I'm at this address and I'm staying. So um, we may be able to explore that a little further next month and actually maybe even get a demo of what, how it works. Perfect. That okay. sounds great. Are we meeting there? Are we going to meet at that at their facility, correct? I don't know. We really talked about it. I we think haven't. that was I just have probably. in my calendar. What's I don't have an address time or anything. And, uh, yeah. uh, it's it's the May, May 7th. I had May 14th. 14th? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know we picked both dates, but. Yeah, I believe the 14th. I believe it's May 7th, and oh, they yeah, were yeah. Um, yeah, they were doing a hurricane drill on the 14th, so the 7th was. All right, let me May go to mine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I have it on my calendar at 9 a.m. But 9 a.m. Yeah. May 7th, 9 a.m. And I think meeting at the EOC would probably be the best bet. Oh, yeah, I have them both days. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so we want to meet there at 9 a.m. Yes. Or do you want to drive together, or what do we want to do? Where's however, it however you want to get yeah, there. It's on Ortiz it. between uh, Martin Luther King and, and Colonial. So it's a pretty good yeah, trip. Most of us may not know where it's at. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. We'll have... Yeah, like, just he'll get, he'll get you all the information. Yeah. yeah, just send us an address. Yeah, an address. We can all go there. Right next to because we know where that's at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, so. got it. I'm going to delete this one then. All right, yeah, just Perfect. let us know where we're going, and we will be there on this side. No, thank you, Chief, for bringing that up. We'll, sure. uh, you know, it's great to look at all options right now. Right. Find right. Out. I think something that will blast the, you know, the people that are here visiting and stuff is probably going to be your best bet. Yeah. They can hit landlines, and then, you know, if you're hitting off the towers out in this area, it shows that you're on the island or somewhere out here, and yeah. it'll blast and say, you know, Give us some feedback. Awesome. Perfect. And one question on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Do you think, if you're partnering with the county on this, that rather than trying to eminent domain land, do you think the properties, the commercial properties along the boulevard would consider a five-foot easement without giving away the property, but an easement where the county could pay to widen the sidewalk, and maybe that square footage would be tax-free for the county? I know the town is on a pretty tight budget, but maybe the county ad valorem, or whatever that that's amount of do. property is, could be waived. It's funny you should say that, because that's what I look at. When I look at, I'm driving, I'm like, okay, there's nowhere to go over here, but if I look mm -hmm. on the beach side, there are so many spots where there's an additional, like, four, five, six feet, yeah. it could be a plant is there, or mm -hmm. there's a, an extra curb a little farther. I'm like, okay, that could be gone. That could be gone. That could be gone. Yeah. And if the wider sidewalk part had the painted stripe, yeah. if yeah. it's dedicated to bikes, then it could be a different <laughs> speed limit. Somebody had mentioned painting speed limits. Yeah. And then if they have to merge back together because a property owner doesn't participate, you know, you could put something on the sidewalk that says speed limit drops to right. whatever. If they're on the sidewalk. Well, you even think about, um, there are streets back there. There were streets um, on the beach side that you would turn back into, and there were some. There were streets back there that we could maybe take over for bikes that don't have a lot of cars. You know where um, mm -hmm. uh, Hooters used to be. Yeah. That was a whole lane back there. It was like about two blocks. Yeah. Well, it's two blocks, but maybe you can cut a little two yeah. blocks no, off no, here no. and move a little through there and yeah. yeah for the properties redeveloping i mean there might be some incentives that they could mm -hmm. you know have lesser green space in their development orders or something just to induce them to allow that frontage to be used they have setbacks anyway right so if that frontage could be used to widen the sidewalks they don't actually give away the property but they just might get a break on their county ad valorem or something <clears throat> love it so great idea thank you i'll add that to my thing Okay, um, any other public com Oh, wait, any more for us? Um, just want to check back on the sidewalks program. Oh, yeah. If did uh Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not. I'm okay. not. Karen. These two are not. So, I, knew I will be today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. All right, let's get those done. And I don't know if Heidi's done or not. Um, I'll check with her. Okay. So you're waiting for everyone to be done, then you're going to follow yes. up with them. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. But I you have the reports because we... Yeah, I, didn't want to, I don't want us to send everything... Piecemeal. Ad hoc, okay. Honestly. Okay. So, into that question, you said 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 Also comes down to utility right away, mm -hmm. so it's a it's a big that's a big question to dig into. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to work with this mm -hmm. to see what they're coming up with because they might have this whole plan that we're not even exactly. You know, I don't, it's like I don't want to reinvent the wheel, and they're like, oh, we're ninety nine percent done, and we're getting ready to propose it, and and, and it's fantastic, and it's so far above what we've even contemplated. 
sometimes you got to wait and see mm -hmm. where they've gone with it. They've done a lot of legwork, I think. I'll talk something. with Frankie. I yeah. can ask him too. Um, I do have one thing I wanted to add. I was happy to hear that uh, town council mentioned the derelict buildings that aren't safe um, and that we're getting on the town to start, you know, hopefully push, get back to pushing them to get them torn down. Um, I'm more concerned about the ones that are were like businesses. I mean, I know the homes are bad enough, but um, some of these ones like Junk Anu and, and the one down in, on Old San Carlos that are just falling apart. It just, and you see people and they're taking pictures and it's just not safe. Go ahead, I Tom. I over to zoning. So I, I did take over zoning recently. I don't know if you knew that or not. So what we've done. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Next month. So, um, we'll have something new next month. <laughs> So uh, what we're doing with that is we're addressing that through a couple courtesy letters that we've developed going through legal already. They're going to be getting sent out. But the more egregious spaces where we have health and safety issues, because that's, both, that's totally what code is about, health and safety and welfare. Right. So we've, we've uh, sent out notice of violations to those places uh, to speak to one uh, of the many, uh, the Neptune is right here. We've been in contact with the owners, the property managers. They're, they're willing to work with us, but we had to send out a notice of violation to push it forward a little bit. So we are addressing those issues. Uh, we're addressing them a little more aggressively than we did six months ago, and that's because I think time has come for us to, to yeah. deal with the health and safety and welfare of these spaces, to your point, with people taking photos. Right. So, yes, we're sending out numerous notice of violations every day, and we are going to start doing hearings in June for people who do not come to compliance after we've educated them to where they have to be. What about the building that actually just needs to come down? I mean, it's just, it's <clears> neat, <throat> it, there's no fixing. What about them? Why are they? Well, that's part of the notice of violation. Some okay. of that goes to where, the, you know, our recommendation is this is where you need to move forward. And it could be a demo thing. And that comes into the building official. Okay. And that comes back to the fire department. They also, you know, they do some of their stuff as well. So that's all part of that notice of violation. We give them the steps to uh, bring the property into compliance and that could be a demo situation because because when i was listening yesterday it was i i because i think we talked about this it was actually they were going to start demoing this month i thought it was like they gave them a letter this so i just the sooner the better on some of them we, i we, get the ones that are fixing but not the ones that are need to come down we've done the education path i think is to the to the best of our ability so yeah. far and now we're going to the more enforcement side of it okay. uh, and that's where we're pushing with the notice of violation because okay. then it comes into a point where we start a case the case drills through and if they don't come to compliance within time frame which is 30 days by state statute okay they don't come into compliance with that space then it goes to hearing goes to the special magistrate and then the special magistrate at that point they have the they have the authority and ability to uh, indicate where they're going to enforce that and then they can start fining we don't do fines the town can't is not capable of doing fines under the statute only the special magistrate can start doing that I thought they weren't fining on those. I thought they were knocking them down and then going to then. If they came into compliance, then If they yes. don't come into compliance. If they don't come into compliance, that's where we have to go to the hearing, the notice okay. of hearing. Okay. I, I guess I was just, like, let's use Junk Anu as a perfect example, just because it's, it's not fixable. It needs to come down. They don't go to compliance. They don't do anything after you've done everything. It still looks like that. I thought, I thought that you guys had said at that point, you were getting bids from a demo company. The demo company was going to knock it down, and then you were going to get them. You, the, they had to pay you guys back. Basically. So that comes through the building official. That's okay. not code. Okay. That goes that goes on the other side of code. Okay. And that's something the town is is pursuing. That's okay. through Frankie's uh, okay. space there as well. Okay. So they so are doing that. Okay. Do you know anything about the Wyndham situation? I, I do not know. I know that we are. There's a case opened on it. Okay. And uh, there was going to be some paperwork forwarded to them coming up very soon. Okay. On the south end, that's probably the most egregious. It is. and they were... It causes traffic to slow down. <laughs> People want to stop, get out, and take their pictures. And, and part of the issue there was they were very gracious in allowing that space to be used for the sand replenishment Absolutely, and stuff like yes. that. But now it's come to the point where it now that's needs over. to be squared away. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any other reports here? Any other public comment? Come on up. <laughs> Wondering why you were waiting. You're so quiet. <laughs> Clenching your teeth. I had a thought. Ed Ryan's having a tooth pulled this morning. So, you know, he's not broadcasting this. Um, 
What about a public safety segment on Beach Talk Radio each week? Just about anything you're trying to get the word out. He'd make it funny. It'd be quick. He reaches a bazillion thousands of people. Right. And it's people, like, I, I have, I'm on Code Red. I get the, the, you know, the town emails and, you know, and all that stuff. But you know, so many people don't. I think most of my neighbors don't. So that way he reached a lot of people and visitors that come. That's the other thing, too. Visitors don't know. And right. so if it's on Beach Talk Radio and just these little fun quips, he's fun to listen to when it's even an advertisement. We will find. We will ask him, if, if, mm-hmm. and maybe we can all take our turn. And he will say yes. Mm-hmm. Well, but it, it can even just be that you send them the message. If you have something, he's all obviously going to have right. it on the show. And we did. But, I did send him the electric bike uh, flyer too from the city. So I asked him to push that out as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then he also was saying, "Well, but now they're revisiting." He's kind of. He's really changed his tune because I kind of went head to head with him. I don't know, a couple of years ago about e-bikes and so forth. And so he's kind of changing his tune. Kim's kind of talking about looking into getting one. I'll talk, well, I'll talk uh, to him. Um, that's a great idea. I think potentially maybe we can have him talk about the, the survey. survey. I was going to say know. the code red, the survey. I yeah. think those are some good things. For yeah, him he can that. promote that survey and then talk about like what the public says. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Once a month. Or... Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else? We're good. Oh, come on up. Sure. The first one he did was why I hate Houston. And it will why? give you a different hey. perspective on cars and congestion. And I know that's such a huge issue here. And then there's another one that I just really watched because he has several. It's called Strodes. It's a combination of street and roads and the difference. So. Okay. And we're closed right now. We're not big enough to have employees yet. So we're going to take off. <laughs> Go okay. back and open the store. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for you coming. Thank you. Um, all right. Next, our next meeting. I think we already have it set for May twenty-first, and that's when F. Dot is coming in for their presentation. Right. And um, hopefully, it should be good. Yeah. Anything else? All good. All right. We Motion to adjourn. Say. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. We're adjourned. <sighs> wow. Public. Wow. <laughs>